And then we get to the weird and wonderful images that were on these things. And for that, I'm going to take a second uh, Greek Kylic replica that we've had here made that we use with the students. Now, this one is a personal favorite, and I'm sure you'll recognize it if I show you for a second the image, or at least you can see part of the image on the inside. It's that famous one by Xekias with Dionysus in his ship at the center with dolphins all around him and the vines growing out of the top. More of that image in a minute because first off, what have we got on the outside of this vessel? We've got a large pair of eyes staring straight at you. And when I go to drink from this, if you'll excuse me, I won't lie down, I'll just stand up, but if I go to drink from this, well, the eyes start to take over my face. They become the eyes, the face, that I show to everyone else around me in the symposium. So this cup is, if you like, it's a bit of a joke, or it, rather it's reminding you that you are being watched, that this is a test. This is not relaxed time. This is where you prove yourself worthy um, of being part of this unit. The eyes on the cup reminding you that you are always being observed. Do it nice and slow. What are you guys seeing on this side of the room? The eyes. The eyes. Right. The outside of the vessel is decorated with eyes, as are, can we see up here on the image as well? And what are the eyes doing while she drinks? They're taking over her eyes. And then what other, the other thing I think that's really important when we get hold of these vessels and actually start to use them in the position, kind of in the setup of the symposium, is that we are not fundamentally looking at these images as we do when they're printed in books. We don't get as much time as we like to look at an image and study it in minute detail. What we're getting are flashes, moments, that when I tilt my cup up to drink, and then down again, the image is gone from your sight. And equally, if you're sitting in front of me as you are, you get to see a particular image, but if people are sitting to the left of me, they'd see it differently and to the right of me differently again. We get to see these images in fragments and snapshots rather than being able to pour over them at length. And everyone is seeing something different. Focus outside the eyes, what else can you see? Warriors and someone dying. Warriors and someone dying. Okay, from your perspective over here, right, you can see warriors and you actually get a really good view of the person dying, don't you? Kind of underneath the, um, the handle, right? And indeed, the warriors picked out in white, making that kind of quite a focus of attention for you. So we're moving on now to think about how you actually got a chance to engage with these images in real time in the symposium. So where you're sitting in the symposium is going to dramatically change the nature of the image you're seeing. And, whereas... and I think the same applies in some ways to the image that's on the inside. Because again, we're so used to looking at this image as if it was just a perfect flat 2D image, not the inside of a cup his purpose was to fill with wine. Now we've sort of maybe a third filled it with Ribena here and we might expect that ancient Greek wine was even more opaque. So we may not be able to see anything of the image underneath the wine until we drink it. Instead, we're just getting the bits around the edge. We're getting some dolphins, we're getting some bits of the vines. So we're getting some senses of this image, but we're having to interpret it from the outside in rather than from the center of the image, which is how we naturally kind of look to think about images. We're seeing dolphins jumping out of the wine dark sea of our wine in the cup. And it's only as we tilt it to drink from it again, excuse me while I take another sip, that more of the image is revealed to us. We start to see some, I can do a little bit for you here without trying not to spill too much. We start to see some of the sail of Dionysus' ship but it's only when we finish the drink entirely that the whole image will be revealed to us. So again, we need to think about these images as being slowly revealed to us over time as we see them bit by bit by bit by bit, rather than just being able to observe them uh, as a whole at leisure as we do in books today. Go wild. Have a drink, just a normal sip. So we're interested now about the image that's inside the vessel. What can we see? Dolphins. You can see the dolphins, right? I, the, the glass is what? About half? The colex is about half full? Something like that? Vines, yes. So you can see the vines. You can see the dolphins. Okay. 
So kind of depending on how full this color case is, you're going to be able to see more or less of the image, right? And particularly, how does the fact that this is wine, liquid, play with and interact with the nature of the image, the actual scene that's being depicted? It's like dolphins are in the sea. <laughs> Dolphins are in the sea, yeah. The wine dark sea of Homer, right? Kind of whatever it might be. Or the wine of Dionysus that the vines are growing out of, right? We can't see... What can't we see at the moment? The can't see the bottom. So you can't see... That's the image as you see it in a book. Again, you immediately get it's Dionysus. But here, actually when it's filled with wine, you can't look from the centre outwards. You can't see the story as a whole. You might do before your cup is filled, right? but once it's full, you actually have to think about interpreting the image from the outside in. Okay, what more did we see as you went to drink? What more did you well, see? Well, like, tipping it revealed like more of the boat. Okay. Um, I don't think it revealed all of it, but like you could see there was something else underneath it. Okay, so you got the end of a boat. Did everyone, did everyone people get that? Like kind of the, so what is the way this, this is actually working and encouraging you to do? Well, like to drink all of it to find out what is actually at the bottom. Yeah, actually to reveal the image, you're being encouraged to drink. Right? You're being encouraged to imbibe the wine of Dionysus to reveal the image. It goes on. So go for it a little bit more. Enjoy your rugby. Yeah. It's really difficult. Um, again, you just might see more of the boat, and also mm -hmm. the more you drink it, gets actually easier to drink because there's less liquid in it. So it gets easier to drink the less liquid that's in it, <coughs> you're obviously getting drunker. Yeah. Kind of as you're revealing the god of Dionysus, the god of wine, the god of the symposium. Or you start to see perhaps a tiny, the horn, the right and the drinking horn that was just that he was holding, kind of. Uh, but as you get, as you down it, as you say, you would finally get Dionysus revealed. And then the story. Does anyone know the story that this image is depicting? Um, there, there was a, he turned a lot of pirates into dolphins. Absolutely. Did, I think they kidnapped him? No. Uh, how much do we sort of think of these things as art with a capital A, with great painters where you were like, have you seen my exequias that I've got up on the wall over here? Kind of, or frankly, do you use that once and chuck it away next time go and buy another set? It was only the person who had it in gold and silver vessels that really didn't chuck their stuff away and perhaps kept that away for the finest event. Or if we're in southern Italy and Sicily, we know people are choosing to be buried with this stuff. And there are some examples that have survived where they've clearly gone through repair in antiquity. So they've become heirlooms that have actually been handed down through the generations. You know, this was your grandfather's drinking kylix or whatever. So, yes, there probably was some variety of use and some ways in which they became special implements that held special significance. And perhaps some people did appreciate that it was an Ezekiel house, and others who were like, oh, whatever. Right? And this is the kind of infamous images that we were looking at last time, right? That kind of thing. You can see them uh, there you go. There's the 2D photo you get given kind of when you see this stuff in books, and here's the image. Right? But this is how we would actually be using this vessel. So how does that change the way that we see and engage with the image? Kind of if you only think about these things as 2D static images, right? and we didn't realize this until we actually did this demonstration the first time around, that there's something to do with fluid dynamics that I haven't kind of worked out yet. I'm just going to talk to a scientist. <laughs> um, but when you put that in a bucket with water in it, it spins. This is, it's not an image, it's a moving image. Right? The, and the way it's kind of, there's an you know, ongoing story, isn't there? When you tell this, there's no clear dividing scenes. On a kylix, there's all, often a clear divide underneath the handles between kind of one story on one side and one story on another side. Right? Whereas that image has no dividing scenes on it. It's a continuous narrative. And actually, when you start to see it now like this, as a moving image, there's almost kind of early cinematography, if you like, kind of wherever this might be in the room, you are getting, if you chose to concentrate on it and focus on it, the whole thing. 
as it turns, as it reveals itself to you. You don't have to move the muscle. Because of the way it's, it's in the water, it's suspended in the water, right? you're not seeing the bottom bits of the image. And of course, depending on how full the sphincter is with wine, if it was fuller with wine, further down, if the crater is not as full with the cold water, it's going to be balancing further down, so you're going to see less of the image. So depending on how this is being set up, how full the crater is, how full the sphincter is, are we at the beginning of the symposium? Right? Wine's cooling. You're not going to see that much of the image at all. As you drink more of the wine, or as the cool wine gets sent over to the crater to be mixed, you might see a little bit more of the image. As it gets pulled out to go and pour over in your crater, you get to see the whole image. And actually, if you think about how this image is designed, take our famous scene here, if you only see the top bit, you see two satyrs, obviously, kind of beards, weird ears, etc., drinking from a cup. Perfectly fine sort of behaviour. Be expecting you to, you lot to do the same. But it's only at the bottom of the image that it really goes a bit weird. Or well, really weird. Okay. In fact, all the way around this, the weirdest stuff, like the satyr drinking upside down, is only at the bottom. Right? So again, how is this image being created to reflect how they know this particular vessel is going to be used? And how are you then able to engage with the vessel as it's used and deployed within the symposium space? changing the way in which you're going to see this image. You are never going to get that kind of view. And I think the final thing to kind of comment is this. Lots of people write about how we should interpret an image on one of these drinking kailikes and what it means. But the symposium was a cultural event that could actually range across a huge spectrum. The symposiarch, the leader of the symposium, could decide at the outset that the wine was going to be very strong and that lots of craters of wine were going to be drunk, that around the people at the symposium would be not just musicians and flute players, but perhaps high-class courtesans, satyri. It was going to be that kind of evening, not on the other end of the spectrum, an evening where the symposiarch had decided that it would be very mild wine, that only one or two or three craters were going to be drunk, and where the main focus was going to be a discussion of philosophy. So coming to a symposium in the ancient Greek world could mean one of any number of things, depending on where the particular symposium you were attending sat on the spectrum. Is it going to be a night of very, very highfalutin educational philosophical talk with a little bit of wine on the side, or is it going to be a night of utter debauchery? And depending on where it sat on that spectrum, you would, I think, see these images in very, very different ways. Um, on another favourite of mine, on the inside of a kylix like this, is an image of someone puking their guts out. Now, how do we understand that? We've just downed our glass of wine, our kylix of wine, and we see an image of someone being sick. Now, if we were at a symposium where it was all out debauchery, we might see that as an image of kind of where we should be by the end of the evening, what was expected of us, what was wanted of us by our cheerful symposium leader. But if we were at a symposium where actually it was all about talking about philosophy and not really drinking very much, and we got that kind of image, we might choose instead to interpret it as uh, a warning about what is not civilised, acceptable behaviour. So we have to remember that the meaning of any image is multiple, not just in the sense that different people around us will be seeing different parts of that image, perhaps interpreting it differently. Different people come with different experiences to an image and thus often understand it differently. But actually the very nature, the very particular symposium that we're attending would also be encouraging us to think about these images differently as well. Cheers. <laughs>